For Crema Media's Polity, I'm Matsari Hoyani. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sutner joins me for Sutner's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Thank you so much once more, Professor, for your insights. Thanks very much. Um, so South Africa's politics currently seem to be very much in flux at the moment, with new alliances emerging and old alliances dying. Do you think this flux will renew people's interest in voting, or will it deepen their cynicism about electoral politics? You know, I think that there is a uh, Sometimes flux and it collapses, as we've seen in this DA hung uh, merger, uh, and there's the NUMSA developments. Uh, I think the, these things are less um, a case of solid realignments than a sense that there needs to be some way of engaging in politics other than voting for the ANC. And in my view, uh, none of these attempts at realignment have, will have so far indicated that they will uh, eat into the ANC vote in a significant way. Possibly the EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters, uh, will be addressing the same constituency as the ANC. Uh, yesterday, I see that they were in Beckerstall, and it appears that they got a very good reception. And that is the place where the Gauteng Premier, uh, Mokonyane, said, we don't want your dirty votes. So that in some ways, the EFF has, in, has revealed a way of um, perhaps addressing the same constituency as the ANC has. But for the most part, my sense is that most of the significant realignments will not affect the ANC. For example, the, if the DA Ahang um, merger had taken place, I don't think it would have affected the ANC. It may have consolidate, well, consolidated two separate political parties. It may have appealed to some of the COPE voters, things like that. But um, I think the realignment is more an expression of despair than uh, a concrete uh, option for people. Oh, so now you speak of uh, an expression of despair. Is this something now we should be wary of? What does this mean now for our political setting in, in the future? See, I think people have a belief uh, that the ANC leadership is corrupt, that it is encouraging violence, that it's not responsive to their needs. But the ANC will be the government for the foreseeable future. Uh, I think people may be exaggerating the extent to which the ANC will lose votes. It seems to me more likely that they will get 60% or thereabouts or maybe more. I don't know. I'm not good at fortune telling. However, I think the despair that people have is that if one cannot do anything through the ballot box, how will one realize one's political aspirations? How will one's interests be expressed? Now that to me brings us back to how we understand democracy. In the 1980s, when we uh, fought for democracy, we didn't only have in mind voting. Mm -hmm. We had in mind continuous involvement and participation in a range of sites of political activity. So this is an area which I think we need to explore more in further discussions. Um, and now, what value do you attach to the NUMSA initiative to establish a workers' party as part of a broader social movement? See, the NUMSA development is very important uh, in terms of it being a blow against the ANC hegemony. Uh, the ANC tripartite alliance, ANC-led tripartite alliance may well 
implode through this because NUMSA is the biggest affiliate of COSATU and uh, it may even affect elections in that uh, COSATU leader uh, organizations have been very key factors in bringing people to the polls, themselves voting and so on. And if NUMSA breaks away from COSATU, other organization, other affiliates of COSATU might break away. However, my feeling is that when I said now, we need to look at democracy in a broader sense, let us address that to NUMSA. Is NUMSA offering us an, an opportunity to realize our political aspirations in a way that is not expressed by the ANC. Now, it's opposed to the ANC, but I believe that the NUMSA project is a little bit narrow. It has uh, organized a political school last week, which is described as a revolutionary Marxist-Leninist school. Now, once you uh, describe that as your basis of entry into politics, immediately you're excluding a whole lot of other people who have never heard of Marx and Lenin mm. and who are thinking of bread and butter issues which may not be issues for the organized working class. They may be shack dwellers, they may be uh, gays and lesbians who have been beaten up or raped, they, they, they may be people whose dignity has been impaired in another way that is not class determined. So the one problem I have is that although NUMSA says they will have um, try to set up a broad social movement, united front, immediately that united front is characterized by them in a way that limits that unity. Other issues that I would also raise is that uh, there are silences. Um, for example, gender is not any part of the NUMSA program. And it's significant that they have completely condoned uh, Vavi's conduct at Kosatu head office, where he had a sexual relationship in a hierarchy. And when the head of an organization approaches you for a sexual relationship, uh, in your mind, you have that this person can affect my career. So it's not something that they ought to have been silent about. And the entire program is completely gender blind. Now, gender is not just a question of relationships between men and women. It is also related to violence in South Africa. Because violence in South Africa is primarily masculine violence. And uh, the silence on that is to me uh, one of the problems of the NUMSA program. On the one hand, it is too uh, class-based. On the other hand, it uh, denies um, questions that affect people who may not be in the unions and who may not be able to frame their, dis their problems within that working class discourse. So, Professor, in other words, you are saying that this now social movement must provide an equal platform for everybody from the different classes and even gender um, um, sides to get a, a chance to even voice their opinion out about their country. A meaningful united front and social movement should look at people who have a range of rights that they cannot defend. Under the Bill of Rights, if I call you a Kaffir, I will be prosecuted, probably will be prosecuted. But if I don't provide a house, if a government official doesn't provide a house, even when someone is entitled, there's no guarantee that that will be attended to just as there will be so-called corrective rapes of lesbians and all of these issues. Now, what I'm saying is 
uh, a united front must be open to representation of all these sectors and interests. Thank you so much for your insight once more. That was Professor Raymond Sattler speaking about politics and elections in South Africa.